Um, this uh, is a work, this is called Das Buch, the book from somewhere between 1979 and 1985, and in it I think we can see Kiefer celebrating sort of the, the book as the relic of the metaphysical age. It was out of the great book of nature that Galileo said he learned to read nature's secrets. Newton did the same thing. The great book, the universe was thought to be a book during the metaphysical age, and solving all of its secrets was tantamount to pulling out all these equations and working them out. And I think the book here hovers over the ocean uh, in a way that also links back to the first page of the book of Genesis where God hovers, uh, as Milton puts it, uh, and chiefly thou, O spirit, that dove-like satst brooding upon the vast abyss and madest it pregnant. And so there's that sense of this God in the form of this uh, metaphysical being hovering over the abyss, uh, but God is the word, the logos, the incarnation of the word that will begin to create. And so I think that in putting this sort of metal book onto his canvas, He's transforming the book into a fossil of the metaphysical age. It's a trace now. It's, it's, it's a vestigial relic. And we'll see this in uh, Kiefer's work as we go along, the transformation of the metaphysical age into a, vesti in, into a midden heap, basically. This is the Order of the Angels from 84-86, in which Kiefer has basically transformed. The Order of the Angels is a reference to Dionysius, the Areopagite, in which there were nine celestial hierarchies. And here he's transformed the nine hierarchies into these stones that have fallen to earth. Angels, in some cases, were associated with stones in the sense that stones were thought to have come down. Uh, the stone in Par Wolfram von Eschenbach's Parsifal was brought down. The grail was a stone that was brought down by the neutral angels in the war in heaven. Um, there's that. There's also the myth of the Kaaba having been brought down by the angel Gabriel. So these stones are associated with these angels. But we note the propeller here, which suggests the mechanization and transformation of the realm of the angels and their celestial hierarchies into the various zones surrounding the Earth, uh, with the exploration of space beginning in the 18th and 19th centuries with hot air balloons that explore the troposphere, and then eventually with airplanes that explore the stratosphere, and then eventually with satellites that populate the exosphere. The further and further you get away from Earth, the faster and faster these machines go. And the more the, the myth of the Earth at the center of a series of concentric shells is updated through technology. Um, this one is Women of the Revolution from 1986, in which he has basically traded out the canvas for a metal sheet. The canvas here is made out of lead. It's a lead sheet, and each of the women of the French Revolution is memorialized by a lily of the valley um, and put inside of a lead frame that sort of protects her, and there's a central garden trowel, and it looks very much, I think, like one of Yanis Kounelis' work, works, who was one of the great Arte Povera artists. And this work, Emanation, is a, an image of, with a very complex cosmology that relates to, here he's got the emanation uh, as lead that he's basically poured down the center of the canvas uh, as though it were coming down from heaven and dropping into the ocean where it would be cooled off. But it's also an allusion to the myth of the Jewish uh, Kabbalistic myth of the breaking of the vessels in which uh, the emanation of light from heaven falls down in vessels that cannot contain the light. There's too much light and the light is too powerful so it shatters the vessels. And the shattered vessels then let evil out. Evil is on the inside of them, and imperfection and chaos into this world. And so the shattering of the vessels becomes reinscribed by Anselm Kiefer to the shattered vessels of the Western tradition. The great transcendental signifieds have also been shattered, and they are lying in ruins all about us. And he's fishing through the midden heap, trying to construct and re-territorialize signifiers from the shattered junkyard scrap heap of the Western metaphysical tradition that has broken apart. So he reinscribes that myth. Uh, and then here, this is Iron Path of 1986, in which he transforms a horizontal surface into a vertical surface by attaching a pair of shoes, one to each iron rail, the same type of shoes that are used for climbing telephone poles. And so he wants to show the process that he's doing here is working back toward heaven, working through his art towards a spiritual worldview. And finally, in Osiris and Isis from 1985 here, uh, he takes the third dynasty ziggurat of Zoser, which was a stepped pyramid, and he connects it to the myth of the shattered vessels. And we recall that in the myth of Osiris and Isis, Osiris was torn to pieces, and pieces of his body were thrown out in 14 different pieces. Here that connects to the myth of the shattered vessels, and each one of the different 17 ceramic pieces that he's attached to the painting here is connected by means of a copper a uh, cord that links back to a circuit board that he's taken from a television set and applied to the top of the pyramid because indeed the electronic age is an age in which the gods have been reinscribed electronically. The astral plane has now been electronified and it connects each one of us to it in some way, but in some 
uh, mysterious, deep, fundamental way, the technologization of the astral plane uh, is a recoding of all these ancient traditions. And so what I think we see, uh, I've gone long here for this video because Kiefer is such a rich artist and there's so much to say about him, but I think we can see that in his work, uh, Kiefer is an artist who is deterritorializing signifiers from the world's ancient esoteric cosmological and mythological traditions and reinscribing them and hybridizing them to create his own sort of private cult of mysteries. And we can see as he evolves over time from a kind of German kitsch artist whose concerns are provincial and narrow and specific to Germany, they get wider and broader over time until they become more and more concerned with universal spiritual motifs and archetypes. Uh, and next we'll move into more of his work.